2 Corinthians chapter 10. For though, verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage battle according to the flesh. There's a battle going on in our lives. Um, Paul is trying to tell us that there is a battle in our lives. I posted two videos prior to this that I call it the battle for our souls. You know, every time the war breaks out, it is a battle between two nations for material possessions and conquering land and uh, taking whatever that is needed. But this is very, very different. This is far more bigger battle because this battle involves eternity. Did anybody even talk about that? <laughs> Did you see in the headline about this eternity battle? Wow, have you ever heard of that? See, the, peop the, the reason is people don't know about it is because nobody talks about it that way. And no one knows. You know, no one knows, no one bothers. It just stays silent and no one cares. And pe people tend to care for what is, what is seen um, visible, tangibly. Only those that are tangible, people begin to pay attention to, which is really sad. Because, because the things that are unseen, that's really what matter. Unfortunately, it is very deceptive in a sense. Because we can be beguiled to think that all we see, what we see is all it is. Look around, okay? This is a nice park that I'm in right now, okay? It is not all that it is, I can assure you. When Jesus passed by the beautiful temple and uh, people admiring it and Jesus said, the time will come very soon. Not a stone will remain on this place, not a stone. You see that beautiful tower right there? Uh, that's a nice highest pillar, yeah, there you go. That pillar there, now the storm will be left behind. You see that the tall, all these high-rise buildings in New York City, this is Manhattan actually. All this will be gone, not a stone. Everything that you have will be gone in this world because this world doesn't last. Everything will be, will, will perish. And even our bodies and souls will perish. You know the uh, Greek philosophy despise salt, the bodies basically. We're trapped inside our bodies, they say. And they say that our souls are eternal, very as going through re reincarnation, etc., which is completely wrong. What we have now is the God of Christianity. In Christianity, God values both soul and body. You hear me? Our resurrection from the dead is not just soul. Our resurrection from the dead is actually body and soul. When a person dies, soul goes to the heaven, is go to heaven with the Lord Paradise. That goes first. The spirit goes first. Soul or spirit. I just like kind of uh, use it interchangeably. It goes up first. And then we have this uh, body that goes up later when the trumpet blows, when you know our all the dead people in the graves who believe in Christ, the elect, the eyes be open, they pop open, they break through the graves. All the body will rise up and meet with the Lord in the midair, and the bodies will be changed to, to celestial. You know, I lo of course, arguably, the most people have been died for for years, for years, for decades, for oh, centuries, even or oh, <laughs> uh, centenary for a thousand years or more now. The body are ashes. So this is the earth, nothing. But God is able to compose them and give them, transform all those things to new bodies. That's what it is. So I'm 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 talking about all this is leading from the fact that we wage a war, but to get into the transformation, resurrection of the body to eternal life. We have to wage the war. Whether we like it or not, we're actually in the war now. Did you did you hear this story about, I think Tim Keller said that before you come to Christ and believe in Christ and be saved, your best friend is the devil. <laughs> your enemy is God. God is after you, trying to get you back to himself. The devil adores you because you are already departed from God and with him. Now, after you accept the Christ, become a Christian, believe to Christ, in Christ. Your best friend is God, and your worst enemy is the devil. He would try to get you, snatch you out of the kingdom of God, back into the kingdom of Satan, under his power. So there's a war, you see that? It's a war. That's why Paul say, I ask that 
for the weapons of warfare are not of the flesh. But now, second thing is we need to know the weapons of this warfare is not uh, is, is not of the flesh. What is flesh? Flesh is human bodies, the world. You know, we don't use ammunition, guns, and, you know, jet, you know, bombs to fight this warfare. This warfare is spiritual. And this, because it's spiritual, and it, the Bible says in verse 4, first, second Corinthians 10, for the weapons are not of the wolf, the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. We are at war, guys. We are at war. But you just don't see it. It's internal war. There's all kinds of internal turmoil, internal war, and also this eternal, uh, eternal war spiritually. People sometimes call it the day of reckoning. See? The day of reckoning comes either a person at the end of his life or very sick is about to pass away to die. So there's a day of reckoning. A day of reckoning can be a day of judgment. So I'm saying the day of reckoning or day will come. That war becomes very, very real. In fact, it's already very real. It's, it's very subtle and people cause it different things, call psychological turmoil, unrest, peaceful. But the real thing is, the real deal is, the truth of the matter is there is a spiritual war. There's a war going on. Paul calls the weapons of a war are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. So our weapons are divinely powerful. It's, it's by God. It's, if you want to fight this spiritual war, you need the weapons from God to fight this war. And what are this war? Your prayer, the word of God, your faith, and walking in God, the, the armor of God, like the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the, and the, and the word, sword of the spirit, and all these things. What does it do? It's, it's powerful, divine power for the destruction of fortresses. Let me, use, let me just expound the word destroy. So our war is not just to uh, stop the enemies from invading Earth and, just, and go back home kind of thing. Our war is actually destroying the enemies because if you don't destroy them, they will destroy you. There is no neutral ground. There is no uh, cease war <laughs> agreement. There is none. It's going on and on and on until the Lord Jesus comes back and consummate everything, make the, the earth, renew everything on earth, and he comes and dwell among us forever and ever in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God, for, for all eternity. That will be the beautiful day that will come. A lot of people are crying for that, and we're waiting for that, we long for that to happen. Okay, so the weapons of war are divinely powerful to destroy strongholds or fortresses. You know what strongholds are? Do you know what fortresses? If you go to war with the city, if you see the old movies, ancient war is they have a huge fortress and people hide behind the fortress you know and the enemies can't invade and the enemies have to break down that 10 inches or two feet or three feet thick stone wall to break into them so that's called protection now strongholds or fortresses are formed in our minds this day spiritual okay which is a bondage like a the addiction to drugs, addiction to uh, pornography, uh, you know, all this uh, woke teachings and trying to brainwash us to change our sexual, uh, 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 gender, sexuality, and all these things. And there's so much warfare going on. All right, so there's also lust. No, in the mind, these are strongholds. Strongholds means like fortresses. The enemy has planted a fortress in your mind about pornography, example, or lust. Oh, this, 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 uh, this, this gender, sexuality, all this confusion. You are bound. You are in bondage. Luke Martin Luther wrote a book called Bondage of the Will. That we are bound. We're in bondage. We can't save ourselves. Imagine you try to put yourself out, out of sinking quicksand or mud. You're sinking down. Do you think you can pull yourself up? You can't because you're sinking. There's nothing hard for you to catch hold of. You need something else. Someone has to pull you out or something solid to push your hands on, to hold on so that you don't sink. The more you struggle on your own, the more you sink. That is the warfare we're in now. Without God, we're sinking and fast. That's why Paul said, our warfare is divine, not of the human flesh. 
We need a hand. The hand is the hand of God. The, the hand came 2,000 years ago in the person, in the man, Jesus Christ. He came and gave us a, gave us a hand. Pull us up out of the depravity, brokenness, and the quicksand sinking down fast. And God pulled us out to save us so that we don't... And, and to save us, we need to destroy the strongholds. Now, this is getting real now. I mean, if you look at the surroundings today, you know the strongholds, are they're grippingly strong. People can't open their eyes. People can't see, no matter how much. There seems to be a cloud, the darkness. They're blinded. Actually, they say the veil is over their face. The Bible says the veil is over their face. They can't get it. You know, that's why we need a revelation. We need a revelation of, of, the, of, of God, from God into the minds of people so that the eyes will be open to see the gospel see the truth jesus said if you know the truth the truth will set you free you can never be true i cannot be you can never be free without seeing the truth and but you cannot you can never see the truth without revelation you can see the truth by studying the books and reading books and even bible or quran or whatever book you read you can't you know, books are just like words. You need a revelation. You need the Spirit of God with the Holy Spirit to open it up, to come and send it into your mind, your soul, and you get it. And you make a decision to turn, you know. But to, to you see, at the same time, for the Word of God to come into you, the Spirit of God has to break down the strongholds in your minds, in your lives, you know. Those are strongholds. Uh, as with you as captive, you can't get out. So you need the Spirit of God to break down that the stronghold. That's a weapon, the weapon of God to break it down, to open it up so that you can get right in there. You know, or else we all we all we all sunk. That's why it's so important that we have to destroy uh, the strongholds of the fortresses. The fortress is not to protect us. Fortress is actually. Um, the, the, the works of the satanic power form a stronghold in our lives. Blind our eyes, we don't see that. I'm not just saying for the non-believers, even for believers, Christian believers, you have stronghold. I have strongholds. What is stronghold? Stronghold is like idols, idolatry, something that bound you. You know, even Christian, we're in the process of sanctification. We're not there. Trust me. Pastors are not there. Scholars are not there. Okay, bishops are not there. Archbishops are not there. We are all in the process of being transformed, changed from day to day. It's a walk with Jesus. By the grace of God, hallelujah, we are being transformed. Not by legalistically trying to obey the Holy Scripture, but by the Word of God that transforms us, rejuvenate us, rejuvenate, uh, uh, re rejuvenate us, uh, regenerate us, give us energy, give us joy, you know, walking with God, walking the Holy Spirit, following Jesus, serving Jesus. It's not a, it's, it's not like a house chore, you know, it's, a, it's not a chore, but it is a joy. You got to come to that, it's such a joy, vibrancy, walking with the Lord, you know, and it, He's not promised us to be a bed of roses, but He promises victory and overcoming life and flourishing life we got to hang on and wait in him destroy the strongholds okay what are the strongholds we're destroying arguments and all arrogance raised against the knowledge of god we first of all we want to destroy arguments against god you see all these our, our thoughts these are all false theologies of woke teachings and wrong teachings ideology that flooded the minds of our children in colleges in high schools in middle school in even elementary schools now okay so the we want to destroy those arguments folks if christians are not well trained in theology well trained in philosophy pastors are not trained in all this thing we can't handle those arguments you don't just rely on prayer but you need to be intelligent, to be informed, you need to be articulate, you need to argue against it. That's why God raised up people like Augustine. That's why Paul is such an eloquent thinker. 
What if in the pause in the book of Romans are full of arguments to destroy the strongholds from the revelation of God? You know, don't be a simplistic Christian. Be a Christian that knows it so that you can argue. You can destroy those arguments. What else? Destroy the arguments and arrogance raised against the knowledge of God. There's so much arrogance today in this world raised against the knowledge of knowledge of uh, knowledge of God. So much arrogance. I would say contempt. Contempt and arrogance thrown at our God and diminish our God. Replace God with rational reasoning, with what is hip, what is on the right side of the history, etc. Christian backslide, some deconstructed, big names as well. You know, I just heard that the guy Stanley guy, you know, deconstructed himself, you know, capitulated himself in his theology towards LBGTQ in his church. You know, instead of loving them for praying for their conversion, he capitulated in the theology. You know, so these are arguments. These are arguments, arrogance, so much arrogance thrown at the knowledge of our of, of Jesus, of the Lord. They swear with the name. So much arrogance is almost threatening uh, to, to, to become a Christian. Christians today walk in the hostile society that with these cultural values pitted against them, you know, they, they feel threatened just to stand out and speak out as a Christian. So, you know, we are at war, guys. Okay, so we are, so what else? Paul said, we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That is an amazing word. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. It's everything. You see that it's a thought. It's not an actual weapon. It's your thinking. You got the mind, you got the person. Okay, guys? That's why we preach expository sermons diligently preach in the power of the Spirit of God. This Sunday, I'll be preaching in Teaneck, New Jersey, uh, Trinity Church, on the calling of Paul, the dramatic conversion, the radical conformation, uh, conversion and transformation of Paul and what it means to us today, all right? So we want to take every thought captive. So this is awesome. I think I will need another video on taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This is, this is all. I'm going to post three videos on this. God bless you.